around the world, locally, with family and friends. And to those viewing for the first time, the House of Destiny International Ministries presents Dr. Larry Manley with today's message designed to create a spiritually vibrant connection between our listeners and God. We hope you will enjoy this presentation and above all, we pray you will be blessed. Powerful word. It's a special word for God's people today throughout the world. And I want you to understand that in order to understand this word today, you got to get rid of your theology because your theology is probably incorrect. Amen? Amen? Your theology has probably been passed on by others. And when the blind lead the blind, they both fall in a ditch. And religion will blind you. Yes, it will. But spirituality in God will open you up, free you to receive the word of the living God. Our message today is entitled, The Light That Fell. The Light That Fail, F-E-L-L, fail. I'm going to start in Genesis 1, verses 1. See, in order to, <laughs> in order to straighten something out, you got to go back to the foundation, to the beginning of it, right? Because if the beginning of it is crooked, then the rest of it is going to be crooked too. Amen? Amen. Come on now. So we got to start back at in the what beginning. <laughs> and then we're going to bring this thing on up. And when you leave here today, you're going to have a revelation of the understanding of who and what God is and who this other character is. Put Genesis 1 1 up for me, please. In the beginning. That word God there means Elohim in Hebrew. If you want to know the Bible, if you want to be a preacher, or if you think you're a preacher and you don't know the original text of the Bible, the Hebrew and the Greek and Aramaic in the New Testament, Hebrew and the Old, then you're not going to be a good preacher. Just that simple. You need to know what you're doing and what you're talking about when you up here standing before God's people. Amen. In the beginning, beginning means Bereshit, Hebrew. Beginning. Elohim, God. If you want to know who Elohim is, the seven spirits around the throne, you'll find that in Isaiah the 11th chapter, verses 2. The spirit of the Lord was upon him. That's one spirit. And the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Those are the seven spirits around the throne. This is what did the creating. Put it back up there. The Elohim. And Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Watch this. Created. Created means that they brought in a new circumstance and a new condition for heaven and for earth. Amen? We got to get this straight from the beginning, people. And God, Elohim, created, made new conditions and circumstances in the heaven. Because he created the heaven, which is the visible universe, but it's also the habitation of God. Amen? Amen. We're going to get this thing straight from the beginning, and then we're going to build on it, okay? But not only did he create the heaven, but he created a thing called the earth. Now, right there where you're going to get stuck if you don't know what you're doing. That word earth there means 
the people of the land. You got to catch that to get the rest of it. If you don't catch that, you're going to miss it. Because something going to happen. You see, the Bible says he created heaven, his habitation, and the earth, which is the, somebody say, people of the land. That means people were here. Come on. See, Adam didn't come to later on. See, that's where theology will mess your head up. Mm -hmm. But something happened. And we're going to find out what happened. Because if God in the beginning created the heaven and the people of the land, the earth, <laughs> then something went wrong. Because verse 2, it goes into a whole different segment. Something happened. Well, let's see what happened. Let's go to Ezekiel 28, verses 14 and verses 15. Ezekiel 28, verses 14 and verses 15. And I, I, I know y'all ain't going to hear this nowhere else. Call, call, call. If you don't know, you just don't know. Right? Amen. If I put you in an airplane, tell you to fly the airplane, you don't know how to fly, then what you going to do? You don't mess something. You won't even know how to get it to move. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Y'all talk to me. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna take my time with this. Come on, enjoy myself this morning. I'm not. I ain't gonna worry about who here, who not here, who could have been here, who should have been here. I ain't gonna worry about that. I got a word Amen. from the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna give this word to you and reach you inside. Where you can be happy and not sad. Huh? Oh, you can be happy and not sad. So let's find out what happened. Let's go to Ezekiel 28, verses 14 and 15. Watch this. Are y'all there? Put it up there. It says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Now wait a minute. And I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God and has walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire and you were perfect in all your ways from the day that you were created till iniquity, sin, was found in who? In you. Uh-huh. Well, that word anointing, a lot of people mess that word up. That word there means to be outstretched in the knowledge of God. In other words, you are more capable of what God is saying than the average. That's what the anointing means. Now, people have different anointings. And people have different degrees of the anointing. And in order to understand that, then... You got to work out of your anointing. Wow. You can't work out of, see, there's too many people trying to work out of somebody else's anointing. Mm -hmm. But you see, God is not a facsimile. Nope. The church is not supposed, see, this church ain't supposed to be like that Baptist church down the street. Nope. Because if it is, then we got a problem here at House of Destiny. Mm -hmm. A big problem. Mm -hmm. He says, you are the Anointed, you're the outstretched cherub. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but you also covers. Ain't that what it says? Amen. That word cherub there means flanking the throne of God. Y'all know what flank means? That means to be right in line to the throne, right behind God. So we talk about Lucifer here now, who was the light bearer, right? Amen. But it also means chariot of God. Now, when you dealing in this, and you understand that the chariot of God is a vessel that transport the Spirit of God. Amen. So that word cherub there means chariot of God. 
Lucifer was a, not only was he in line, he was flanking the throne of God, third in line, next to Christ. But he was also a chariot of God. He transported God's spirit. And where did he transport it to? His position was to cover the earth and bring God enlightenment to the people who was already created on the earth. Bear with me. I'm going to show you a trick you'll never forget through the Holy Ghost. So you need to listen and understand what's really going on. And then you'll understand why so much darkness in the world. Why so much insanity in the world? Why so much sickness in the world? You see? So here's God being transported. His spirit of enlightenment. And Lucifer's job was to cover the earth because that's where God had positioned him. I'm going to prove it to you in the Word. He positioned him to cover and to teach the people of the land, the earth, about God. It was a spiritual evolutionary thing, okay? Mm-hmm. To bring man from one degree to another degree and make him in the image and the likeness of God. But God wanted, wanted to do this in a interval type way with the people that he created. Oh boy, this thing gonna get deep and it's gonna get good. The word tells us that he was on the holy mountain of God, which is the spiritual Eden of God. Word Eden means delight in God. Amen? Amen. And he said he walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. That means that he knew the thoughts of God because our God is a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. And he knew the thoughts of God. Oh, man, Mr. Squid. He said, you were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created until iniquity was found in you. Now remember, God created the heaven and the people of the land. It was a done deal, right? In Genesis 1, but something took place. This character who was supposed to have been covering the earth and bringing man up. Into a state of God. He figured that wasn't good enough. So when did he make this mistake? This fatal mistake. Glad you asked that question. Go to Isaiah 14. Verses. 12 through 14. Amen. Go there for me. I need the scriptures y'all. Wake up. How art thou fallen? Where? From heaven. heaven. Mm -hmm. Oh, who? Light bearer, Lucifer. Son of the morning. He's the son of the breakthroughs. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Next verse. For thou hast said where? In In his mind. In his mind. This is where iniquity was found in him. Watch this. I, he started running out of the I formation instead of the God formation. You see. We started doing the things. See, 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 when we start and get involved in a lot of stuff, the first thing goes is our dedication to our duties with God. I'm speaking truth. Amen. I'm speaking truth. I don't have friends in the pulpit. I speak truth from here. The only friend I got here is truth. That's it. I ain't got nothing there for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I'm going to give it to you. Just like it is. He started running out of eye formation. He said, I will ascend well into heaven. But God ain't, but God put him in the first heaven. See, he's talking about all the way up. God put him in the first heaven where he could cover the earth. 
Because the first heaven is the air. Second heaven is the star. Third heaven is the throne of God. Amen. When he wanted to go, watch him. He said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, the second heaven, and the angels. He said, I'm going to sit also upon the mount of the congregation. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus' position. In the sides of the north. Next verse. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. In other words, he wanted to go above the word. The cloud represents the word of God here. But God say in the beginning was the word. He wanted to ascend above God's word because God's word had placed him in a specific area. But that wasn't good enough. Y'all follow me, Chris? He said, then I will, he didn't say he'd be the most high, but he said, I will be like the most high. He wasn't that stupid. He knew he couldn't be, be the most high God, but he said, I can be like him. And then all hell broke loose because God said, okay, I'm going to take you down. I'm going to take you down. I wish my apostle was here this morning because well, I teach him as I teach you. You got to watch who you put in position. Yeah, I say you better watch who you put in position. Pass that on to him. You see what Satan done to the one that created him. Amen? Amen. Come on now. He said, I'm going to be like the most high and God took him down. Busted him. But here's the thing. He was the transporter of God's spiritual light, right? That was supposed to be teaching the people. He was covering them, right? If it's raining outside and you ain't got no covering, no umbrella, guess what? You're going to get wet, right? And from your wetness, you're going to get sick and everything else. Am I in the house? So, so when you remove the covering, and where the covering was once light, and now the light goes out, ain't nothing left but darkness, right? Let's go to Genesis 1, verses 2. Here's where verse 2 comes into play. See, we got to redo verse. We got to do the beginning before we can do anything else. Because if the beginning is wrong in your teachings, then the rest of it is going to be wrong too, right? Amen? Now watch this. Now while I'm methodically taking you through the book. Now watch this. Just wait a little while. We're going to make it clear to you if you just sit there and listen. You got to throw your theology and what you think about God and what you think that you know. Because what you know is probably ain't quite on key. And we got to get it on key. Because eh? Jesus said, I give you the keys. To the mysteries. And keys unlock secret things of God. Amen? Amen. Huh? What do you see in having a vault and you can't get in it? So you got to have a combination or the key to the mystery. Jesus said, unto you I have given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. I have given you the keys. So when we go and we look at Genesis 1 verse 2. Watch this. Watch what happened to the people. Watch what happened to them. When Satan fell, Lucifer, the light bearer, and the people of the, earth, of the land, the earth, right? Watch this. Was without form. You know what that means? That word means confused. Did you catch it? When you turn off the light, you're walking in dark, you're confused. So the people of the land became confused. They became void, without form. They became void because where there is no light, where there's only darkness, there's only emptiness. Because you can't see nothing. Amen? Amen. Oh, I told you you're going to get right. And darkness which is chaos, 
was upon the face of the deep. Darkness, chaos, became enemies. That word face there means to be against. It became an enemy of the deep things that God was wanting Lucifer to teach us. Amen? Amen. And the Spirit of God, the Elohim, the Spirit of the Elohim, it began to move upon the face of the waters because the face of the waters was against the blessings. Amen? Amen. The water means blessings. It's in the book. So here we have a dichotomy, a situation where God is brooding upon the face of the waters. So darkness was against the deep things of God in us and us being able to reach those deeper things. And then God's spirit was against the darkness that was upon the blessings to be found in the deep things of God. Amen. So when you're in school and you get to the first grade, you go to another grade. But if you don't keep going on up and on up and on up and on up, then your intelligent level is going to go down. You're going to become stupid as a mule because we once had a guy went to school with. He was 21 years old and he still hadn't graduated. Yeah. You know, God said, uh uh-huh, in verse 26 there, let us do what? Make man. It ain't up there. Don't worry about it. And let us make him in our image and after our likeness. Watch this. Remember I told you that God had the light bearer, Lucifer, to cover the earth. And since he was the chariot of God, he was carrying God's spiritual light. And teaching the people on the earth at that time, he was teaching them in intervals. Mm -hmm. But after they fell, because of Lucifer, then God come back with a new thing. He said, I'm not going to make man where he has to grow in intervals to become like me. But I'm going to create man in my image and in my likeness this time. It won't be no mistake. Did y'all, y'all, y'all getting what I'm saying up in the church? So he created man. He said, let us make man as Elohim. Because every time God said something, he challenged that which was there. That which was there was the people that had fallen into darkness. They didn't have nobody to enlighten them no more because Lucifer, who is now Satan, had fallen. And when he fell, the rest fell too. Amen? The roof fell in. Now here's the Lord. He said, let us make man. We're going to make him. And we're going to make him in our likeness, which is spiritual, because God is the spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And he said, let us make him in our image. Our image means that he made us as celestial beings, heavenly beings. Oh, come on with it. And then he gave us dominion over everything, right? He said, this time I'm going to make him. He's coming out like I want him. eh? We ain't going to have to grow him into this. I'm not going to use nobody. I'm, I'm going to do it. In other words, it's going to be a done deal when this one is made. 
So he made him and he called him man, which means Adam, which means red. Because bloody red. Now we'll make him like that. So he made man. And in verses 128, look at what he said. Now y'all got to catch this. Because I'm finna throw something at And God blessed them. Means that he honored and crowned man. Mm -hmm. And he said to them. Because, see, see, be fruitful. In other words, I need for you to bear some stuff for me. Some more like you. Amen. See, that's what church will be doing. <clears throat> and then he said, I want you to multiply. Because God deals in multiplication. But here's the catch here. What does redo mean? You redo something. Replenish. Replenish means to do it the first time. Replenish means to redo it. Amen? See, see, when you, when you, when you take them okie doke Bibles that they got out here that they call Bibles, they don't call them holy Bibles no more, they call them Bibles. See, see, they done changed that word to try to trick you. They got that word changed to plenish. No, that's not what the Hebrew says. It say replenish. That means redo. See, see, because if they'd have put replenish there, then what would have happened is it would have tore up their theology. It would have tore it up. So once you start a lie, you got to continue with a lie. And you got to take out the truth and tamper with the truth because there are some places in these new Bibles where they've taken out complete scriptures. Like this one comes out through fasting and prayer. You go to the right one, which is the wrong one, and you won't even see that in there. That'll be omitted. Replenish. Replenish what? The people of the land. Remember that word earth there mean people of the land. So here you got this thing called Adam and Eve, which is already created in the image and the likeness of God. But everything else out there, all the other people, they are in darkness. Amen. Where did Cain get his wife from? Cain went down the land of Nod, which is the land of wandering, and married. That means somebody was down there.